ever been told that your dating standards are too high or that you need to find a high value partner? What if I told you that those ideas were a bunch of bullshit? That's bullshit. That were holding you back in dating. Hi, I'm Dr. Catalina, the intimacy doc. I'm a psychologist who helps you have the great sex and intimacy you desire and deserve. So if you haven't already, subscribe to my channel. I post new videos every Tuesday. Let's get into it. We're going to be exploring how high standards or finding a high value partner is really missing the mark and leading so many people to feel frustrated and disappointed, disenchanted about dating, and then ultimately just burnt out. We're going to dive into how emotional maturity is a bit at the core of what we're talking about here when we are looking for our match in dating. First, I really want to just debunk the whole use of high standards or high value. I can't stand seeing high value, low value. And there's a couple psychologists who are known out there who are using those terms. I mean, that's patriarchy at its best. All it's doing is make yourself feel better and by by criticizing someone else. When we know that looking at status or a physicality, those aren't actually predictors of long-term relationship and sexual satisfaction in a relationship. And that's why dating apps often suck. Check out that video where I talk about the superficiality and how dating apps are actually working. They have a lot of implicit biases and just are too overly focused on physicality. When we use these labels of high value or or I have too high standards, unfortunately, again, can lead to disappointment, dissatisfaction, and it also leads us to think, oh, if this person isn't high standard or high value, then I'm gonna half ass it. And we've all seen stories about shitty dates like that. And why would you want to put yourself in that situation anyways? And it's just not. So all of this, I think, is just a bunch of bullshit. And I know that there is like that app that I put I signaled in my prior video of showing people how many people are really meet their standards. And most people, particularly once they get to midlife, aren't seeing many people with that. So I would like to change the conversation to compatibility. And at Motnik, you started off by saying, yeah, why don't we focus on compatibility? But then you actually just went into really going back and saying, not everybody is a 10 and they need to have a better self-assessment. And fortunately, that's no different than saying that somebody's high value or low value by just ranking them from zero to 10. It's a bit more of a dimensionality since you have zero to 10 ranking rather than just high or low, but it's still the same thing. It's me versus them. And we know when there's that competitiveness within when looking at particular partners, but then also between genders, that is what fosters this toxic dating culture. And we know from studies that these shallow superficial checklists and have very little predictive value of how sexually or relationally satisfied you're gonna be long-term. And I do believe that the majority of people are looking for one or multiple long-term partners when we're really wanting that deep intimacy. So values and how you live your life are very, very important because if you value your health, you're going to prioritize your lifestyle. There's different values that are certainly important, but I'd like to actually talk about what I think is the main reason people aren't matching their partners is because most people just don't actually have the emotional maturity to meet a partner where they think that partner should be. Hollywood has glamorized what relationships should be looking like. And one, they have a lot of sex in them and passionate, particularly with women. And some men are more wanting that emotional intimacy more. And so yes, I'm speaking to the men right now. If you are wanting a successful woman who is attractive, worldly, independent, assertive, then you have to be able to have the capacity and resources to actually meet that because those are all emotional maturity. That is all about how we have emotionally developed. And unfortunately, we meet people who meet us where we are emotionally. If your picker is off, that's actually the place to start. Why is your picker off? And I'll say this about myself. I used to completely date people who were just not compatible with me. It was a big reflection of my sense of low self-worth. I didn't have the capacity to actually feel secure enough in my body to be in relationship 
relationship with people who were more secure than me. And I ended up just attracting people who weren't. And that was actually what my body felt was safe. And this is the part. If your body is used to feeling unsafe, unheard, dissatisfied, rejected, because that's a lot of what you're experiencing in relationships. And again, not even just in intimate relationships, but in close familial relationships that you learned along the way. Fortunately, that's what your body is going to feel safe in. I know it fucking sucks. Trust me. I've done a lot of work around this with myself and tons of clients. So instead of talking about these checklists, think about how do you hold yourself? How do you nurture yourself? How do you manage and move through, not avoid your own emotions? And then look for that in a partner because we know that that is what is at the core of emotional intimacy. And without emotional intimacy, you better bet there's not going to be physical intimacy. That's just the way it works in long-term relationships. You want to bring in other partners and be e &M, Absolutely. That's fine. That's one way to do it, but don't expect that is going to nurture the emotional intimacy in a relationship. It won't. And many couples unfortunately do that. And I'm a big advocate for e &M, ethical non-monogamy and I myself have practiced polyamory for about five years, but it requires very, very skilled relational skills. So coming back to you're probably meeting partners who are at your level of emotional maturity. That means that if you are more immature in whatever ways, maybe you don't know how to initiate sex, you don't know how to hold a deep emotional conversation, you don't know how to be more vulnerable, then don't expect to meet a woman or a partner, again, the opposite sex, same sex, whatever, that is actually going to have their shit together, gonna be assertive and gonna be confident. Because to do that, you have to have a level of awareness. And instead of us breaking down high versus low, let's just talk about how compatible you are, how you're meeting each other around your emotional maturity, and how can you begin to grow together? I love Maya Angelou's quote when she says, I don't trust people who don't love themselves and then tell me I love you. And that's so much around of what I'm talking about. When you don't value your own self-worth and when you don't know how to emotionally nurture yourself, that's what you're going to keep on attracting. But if you want that in a relationship, you want a nurturing partner, be the partner you want to date. <laughs> you have to be that first. Building emotional capacity is absolutely learnable. And drop a comment below if you want me to explain more about this, because this is really at the core of what I do with couples around intimacy. And this is about being able to experience your emotions, embody them, move through them, and then nurture them, take action in a conscious way, not just reactive way. If there is a need, want, and desire, how you can assert that. Building that emotional capacity is absolutely a learnable skill. The reality is that without this emotional maturity, this is why so many long-term relationships just get stale. Particularly if there's kids around, they just say, well, this is, it is the way it is. And I just know too many couples who've lived more than decades together, but really apart and not feeling that intimacy. I don't think it needs to be that way. So if you're dating, you don't want to start off that way, right? You don't have to. So if you really want to build that emotional maturity and have real connections and meet people who are a match to you emotionally, then this is where you begin by getting curious, exploring what are some of the habits that you've been doing over and over and over in your relationship? What are the situations you keep getting in? Do you keep feeling rejected? Are you the person who's always leaving? How comfortable are you in having real conversations with your partners? Begin to understand what your patterns have been, particularly if you are in midlife, because this is the thing, change is not easy. Most people don't change. Most people don't change. And as a psychologist, I help people change. Most just don't. 
And unfortunately, people who have been married and divorced, they're more likely to get a second divorce and then definitely after a second divorce, more likely to get a third divorce. And it's because they're doing the same habits across all of these relationships. So begin to look there, put action into this and get support. This is where therapy absolutely can help. We learn experientially. You can practice things in a self-help book, but we change relationally. And that's the beauty of working with a licensed therapist is, is that in that relationship, that's actually where your body can experience change. It's in that relationship, but doing the work of actually beginning to nurture those emotions and create new neural pathways with aligned behaviors. That's what you're trying to do over and over and over. And it is not easy, but it is absolutely possible. It's not easy, but it's possible. And again, by doing this, you're not only going to attract a more aligned match, but you yourself are going to feel more whole. Our partners are meant to be complementary. They aren't mandatory. We're okay being single nowadays. We've evolved enough that you can live single. We don't have to live in these groups anymore. But if you want a partner, then it is about building that emotional maturity and development in yourself so that you can then be a match, reciprocate that in that relationship and then grow and expand from there. All right, guys. So hopefully this was helpful. I'd love to hear your questions because I think this conversation around high standards or low value, I just think it's a bunch of fucking bullshit. And I really can't stand this conversation anymore. If you found this video helpful or insightful, definitely give it a thumbs up. I welcome any of your comments down below. And if you haven't already, subscribe to my channel. I drop new videos every Tuesday. Let's have real conversations and get you the great sex and intimacy you desire and deserve. Cheers, guys.